Hi, my name is Gabe Turo. Welcome to StoneInstruments.com. Uh, this is my new Crimson Doombeck. Uh, I am. I'm a really big fan of this drum. First of all, I really think I got a nice shape. Show this to you. Um, I really like the way this tapers in pretty, pretty uh, severely, and then goes out into a bowl. I made this in two pieces on the wheel, um, and then glazed it. I put a uh, white layer of glaze over the crimson and then actually uh, splatter the top but it ended up doing this kind of cool textured thing uh, I think it's really pretty and then I put uh, fish skin on it um, symmetrical these days and as a result they're actually resonating uh, a little bit differently they're uh, they're sort of tending towards uh, sp specific notes more uh, as this is a collection of different harmonics but at the same time it's actually got a pretty clear fundamental pitch so the fact that it's doing that means they're actually ringing a little more um, and are just more responsive in general. This drum is extremely responsive. For such a little drum, I mean, this is, this is tiny. This is like five pounds. Uh, actually, it's a little more than that. It's like six, six pounds. It's actually a little bit heavier right in the center here. It's got, it's got enormous bass. This has as much bass as some large wooden djembes I've played. ceramic and it was fired to 2200 degrees Fahrenheit um, and when it gets uh, heated up that hot it becomes molten and actually compresses as it cools down so the molecules actually end up closer together and the object is actually smaller when it comes out of the kennel it shrinks by about like 13 percent on average uh, I think some clays shrink more some clays shrink less and actually, depending on the glaze you put on the outside. What I wanted to point out was that this is covered in glass. Uh, basically, you put paint on the outside, 
which they call glaze. Uh, it has a lot of uh, different particles in it, um, like iron or um, just other uh, stains, that kind of thing. But when it, when it gets heated up uh, to these really, really high temperatures, it crystallizes and turns into glass. So that's obviously different than paint. So it has different chemical properties, but you, you, you paint it on and then you fire it and you get this like gem out of the kiln. It's just really kind of amazes me every time it happens. But uh, this piece is particularly pretty. It sounds awesome. All right, I was explaining. The reason the drum is so loud is because the walls are not flexing that much. Uh, the head is vibrating a ton. What happens is it compresses the air and most of the vibration ends up transferring into the air, which then has to compress coming out in the, in the center here and then flies out the bottom. The more the air compresses, the more it's going to vibrate and the louder it's going to sound when it, when it shoots out of here. You kind of get like a foom sound actually as the air is coming through the small uh, junction point. Uh, so in other words, if this was made of wood and this was actually vibrating a lot and flexing, it would actually be taking energy out of the air that's being compressed inside the drum. So because this basically holds still, all the vibration from the head transfers into the air and then you end up with a lot more volume because the air vibrating is what's making the sound happen. I mean, this is basically directing it. And ceramic is an excellent, excellent uh, resonator uh, in that it, it directs sound extremely well because it's so hard and dense. It's kind of the whole idea is that sound bounces off of it really, really well. Well, that's about it for this uh, this Doombeck, this uh, Darbuka Doombeck. Thanks.